Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing our moon, and specifically some of the new updates in regards to the formation of the moon, and what the scientists believe happened approximately 4.5 billion years ago to create this somewhat unusual and somewhat mysterious object. The object that's quite unique in the solar system, and potentially is also quite unique in the other star systems as well. And that's because, compared to some of the other moons in the solar system, our moon is just a little bit too big compared to the planet, it's also a little bit too similar to the planet, and actually has quite a lot of other features that almost suggest that both Earth and the Moon were actually created from some kind of a larger object, or from an event that created both of them at the same time. Something that happened 4.5 billion years ago, and something that could be actually quite rare, but something that could also explain why, at some point, the Moon orbiting planet Earth helped the Earth stabilize and created just the right conditions to then start life on this planet but not a lot of other objects out there. And so today we're going to be discussing some of the new updates in regards to what's known as the Giant Impact Hypothesis, with some of the most advanced simulations to date, helping us understand a little bit more about how the Moon was probably created, and why things are the way they are, both on the Moon and on planet Earth. Here's, by the way, a kind of a family picture of our planet and some of the bigger, more important moons in the solar system. As you can see, Earth's moon is a little bit different from everything else. It's also the densest and the rockiest object of them all. But I guess the first question is, why do the scientists today think that the moon was probably created from the same material as planet Earth? Or why do they think that this object here was a result of some kind of a collision 4.5 billion years ago? Well, the first clues came from various Apollo missions in the 70s, starting with the Apollo 11 in 1969, that collected 22 kilograms of various lunar rocks, they were then analyzed on planet Earth. Here's one of the first moon rocks, this is from the Apollo 17 mission. And to the initial surprise of the scientists, they discovered that a lot of these rocks were produced approximately 4.5 billion years ago, or about 150 million years after the formation of the solar system, so a little bit after the formation of other planets, but surprisingly had extremely similar composition and isotopic composition to a lot of rocks, ancient rocks, on planet Earth. On top of this, the way that the moon orbits around the planet creates a relatively high angular momentum for both bodies that's actually kind of difficult to explain unless they were created from something that existed here before that already had high angular momentum in the beginning. Now, a collision with an object, for example, would create this extremely high angular momentum and would maybe explain what we're observing. At the same time, the lunar spin alignment is very similar to the spin of planet Earth, also difficult to explain unless they were created from the same stuff. And their density is relatively similar as well, whereas the density of all other moons is much much lower. So basically here, almost everything points at the fact that the moon might have been created from relatively similar material to planet Earth, but through some kind of a violent event 150 million years after the formation of the solar system. With the major explanation now suggesting that about 4.5 billion years ago, there actually might have been another object known as Thea, located in one of the Lagrange points in the same orbit as planet Earth, that eventually became destabilized and slowly approached our planet, colliding with it a few million years later. And the result of this collision was obviously the formation of the Moon. In this case, that primordial object is now referred to as Thea, the mother of Selene, or the goddess of the Moon. Now, so far, this is the best explanation we have for all of the observations, but exactly how this happened is, of course, another question. And so, for many years now, the scientists were trying to figure out exactly what happened, how it happened, and more importantly, how all of this then produced both the Moon and planet Earth. And some of the initial assumptions based on some of the earlier simulations suggested that there might have been some kind of a powerful impact that probably created a ring around the planet, or basically some kind of a disk of debris that was probably formed from a lot of the material on the surface of Earth, and of course from the leftovers of Theia. Eventually this coalesced into the Moon that used to be much much closer to our planet, producing ridiculously high tidal effects, and over time slowing down the rotation of Earth from 6 hours to 24 hours that it is today. But these initial effects, especially these really really powerful tidal effects, might have actually played a really important role in allowing life to form on our planet, because as Moon orbited around Earth, it almost served like a stirrer, mixing all of the chemicals on the surface and essentially allowing complex reactions to take place. All of this was extremely different from everything else in the solar system at that point, making the Moon potentially one of the more important parts 
for the formation of life on the planet. But one thing nobody could agree on is of course that actual collision part. How exactly did it happen? How exactly did some of those parts then form the moon? And is this something that's relatively common and can potentially be found in other star systems, which would of course suggest that life could form there as well? Or is this something that's just super rare where Earth got really lucky? So here, this is where the simulations and various supercomputer calculations come into play. Here's actually one from, I guess, eight years ago from 2014. Now here, you can see that there are not a lot of particles, but they do eventually result in the formation of the moon, which seems to actually interact with the planet several times until it finally settles into some kind of an object that eventually stabilizes and starts orbiting around the planet. This doesn't take too long, but it still takes some time, so this process is definitely relatively complex. More importantly is that this indicates that the moon was probably formed from various debris that almost look like a ring at some point. And quite a lot of similar simulations have been conducted in the past, with the scientists trying to figure out exactly how all of this worked, by essentially reproducing this using supercomputers, but slowly increasing the resolution of the particles, and thus increasing the number of the particles, which also meant that you would need more and more powerful computers to try to simulate all of this. Now here the idea is pretty simple. Simulating this with just a few particles is not really that accurate in representing what might have happened. Here one of the scientists gave an analogy of using, for example, a Lego car that only contains a few blocks in it, compared to an actual car made out of atoms. If you were to test the results of a collision between actual cars where we know the effects from various tests, and then compare these to tiny models, the effects are obviously going to be very different. And similarly, using supercomputers with a lot of blocks versus just a few blocks is probably going to produce different results. Which is why the scientists have created this. The most accurate, the most detailed, and the most high resolution collusion simulation of the object that we refer to as Theia and primordial Earth. And in this case, it kind of shows us what most likely happened based on these initial simulations. And here is the interesting thing. As you see from the simulation, the moon did not really form the ring or did not form various shredded particles. It might have actually formed almost right away within just a few hours. Here's another simulation from a slightly different angle. So as Theia collides with planet Earth, it generates a huge amount of debris that mixes and sort of circulates around the planet, but it almost instantly coalesces into larger chunks, larger objects. And more importantly, in this simulation, it actually created two objects, the larger moon and the smaller moon. And because of the gravitational interaction between them, the smaller moon got sort of lobbed away from the planet, and the larger moon fell into the planet. And at some point, all of this formed extremely similar objects to what we actually observe in the solar system. And so in this particular case, the simulation recreates the Earth-Moon system extremely accurately through just one collision, and all of this only took a few hours. Although naturally, as you can see, it also produced quite a lot of other debris, which of course suggests that there could be some rocks and asteroids orbiting somewhere out there that might have been the leftovers from that initial collision. But the most important discovery from the simulation, the most accurate so far, is really that all of this took only a few hours. It was not a slow and gradual process, it did not take thousands of years, it might have been super super quick. In this case, the scientists used a very complex simulation meant to simulate gravitational and hydrodynamic forces, the simulation known as SWIFT, and ran this on a system known as COSMA, cosmology machine. And by simulating this over and over, using different angles and different speeds, they were able to recreate exactly what we're observing by using approximately 100 million particles, which is thousands of times more than ever before. And more importantly, the simulation also kind of agreed with all of the observations that we have in regards to the composition of the Moon and planet Earth, the actual spin, the angular momentum, and all of the other observations that even include the unusual tilted orbit that was formed as a result of this collision. Although naturally, to confirm all of this, the scientists would still have to examine some of the other rocks from various lunar missions in order to confirm the isotope composition and the mixture of these elements, comparing them to the theoretical values from this particular simulation and from the study. But because all of this seemed to have happened relatively quickly and also without much hassle, it also suggests that this is maybe something that could happen around other objects and possibly even happened around the objects in the solar system as well. For example, it could have happened around our neighbor Venus, but because it's much closer to the Sun, there's actually a chance that it might have lost its moon because of the tidal interactions with the Sun. 
which eventually caused this planet to become entirely different from our own planet as well. And you can learn more about why neither Venus nor Mercury have moons in one of the videos in the description. More importantly, it also implies that some of the potentially habitable exoplanets we've discovered so far could maybe have very similar features as well. Maybe a moon could have formed here as well, allowing those planets to experience similar effects to our planet Earth. Now it's not really a question we can answer yet, especially until we discover some of these moons around other planets, but it would be an important question to answer if we ever want to answer the question of does life exist somewhere out there? And so by answering the question of the origin of the moon, we might actually come a little bit closer to learning more about life existing somewhere else out there. But naturally, this is just one of new studies that has this new answer. It's quite possible that in the next 10 years, as the computers improve and as we get better and faster supercomputer simulations, we might be able to discover something entirely different or something that helps us understand a little bit more about the moon formation that was not answered in this particular study or in this simulation. At the moment though, this is still pretty impressive and the simulation itself is just incredibly beautiful as well. But until future discoveries or until future studies, that's pretty much it. You can find all of the relevant links, including the links for the simulation in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.